Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here with a new video series that we're calling Saturday. Saturday is all about celebrating the weekend by getting our craft on, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to create a fun acetate card to say hello to summer, so I'm using these bright, fun, summery colors, and I'm going to create a watercolor background to put on the front of my acetate card. And so to do that, I am just using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Now over in the classroom, I linked a to a blog post that Julie did using these same ones where she created a really nice soft floral stamped image with those. So you may want to check that out. But I started out with the yellow, and then I used the orange, and then I'm also using this flamingo pink. Now I don't want to get too pink here, so I'm just adding a little bit of pink for the third color. And I did want to show you there, as I was blending those colors together, if you overlap them, just like I'm doing here, you don't actually even need water to blend these. These will blend with each other. But today I'm creating a watercolor look, so I will be adding water. But that is an option. If you just want to blend these pins together with the colors, you can do that as well. So once I got all of that color laid down, I'm going to come in with just a paintbrush and some regular water and I'm just blending these colors out and this you'll see will soften and really create that really beautiful watercolor look. Now as I'm doing this I'm kind of just patting the water over and you can see that those lines that I created they blend out very nicely and in the end I ended up taking this and letting it dry and then I coated this with some Perfect Pearl Pigment Powder Mist. Say that 10 times fast. Perfect Pearl Pigment Powder. Perfect Pearl pigment powder. <laughs> anyway, there is another challenge for you today. So once I got those colors kind of blended out, there were a couple places that I had gone back and added some more orange in that weren't blending very well. So I went right back in with this clean color marker and just added some more color to help those blend out. Now, adding this to a wet cardstock is not going to affect the marker at all. So it's perfectly safe to add those in there. Because it's a real brush tip and not a felt tip, it doesn't absorb into the tip like it would with a felt tip marker. So if you add it to the wet cardstock, it's fine. Just make sure you scribble it off to get the paper, the um, color going again. So now I'm going to do some die cutting. And because I'm gonna be cutting some acetate, I am using this precision base plate from Sizzix, and I'm using the Folk Heart dies that Julie designed for the Essentials by Ellen Line. This piece of acetate, by the way, is from the We Are Memory Keepers Clearly Bold 6x6 pad, and these, scale, these patterns are scaled a little bit down from the 12x12 12 12 pad, so if you want a little bit larger scale of pattern, you can go with the 12x12. 12 12. Since I have all of my stuff already out here for die cutting, I'm going to do the rest of my die cutting, and I started with this Fancy Hello die. This is from Poppy Stamps. I'm also using these nesting frames. These are from We Are Memory Keepers. And I'm going to cut my watercolor piece out using this nesting frame. And I did cut this bigger heart earlier, but I realized that the scale of it wasn't quite right for that size of nesting frame that I'm, I'm using. So I am going to cut that down a little bit. Now you're seeing me use the precision base plate here. This precision base plate is great for cutting through things like acetate and glitter cardstock or for using with those intricate dies like this little hello. So you can see I've cut out quite a few things here. I've cut out my watercolor piece as well as a backer piece because I'm going to be adding this to my acetate card. So you'll see how this all comes together here and why I need all those pieces. Now because I knew the acetate card would be a little hard for you guys to see on camera, I did go ahead and slip a piece of white cardstock in there so you can see kind of how I'm positioning this. And I'm going to start by adding some tape runner adhesive to that watercolor piece and then I am going to position it onto the front of my acetate card here. Now I'm going to use my grid mat to make sure that I get this all lined up. <laughs> and I use my tweezers to keep my fingers out of the way, but I had to edit quite a bit of this out right here. I was having some commitment issues with placing this piece on the front of my card today. It took me quite a while to place this down. I'm not sure if I was intimidated by the acetate, but in the end, it's just a regular old card, and I don't know what was happening with me, but don't let that happen to you. Just go ahead and put it down there in the middle, and once I got it positioned, you can see that you see the adhesive on the back side. And that's where the second piece, uh, the second nesting frame comes in because I'm going to add adhesive to that as well. And I'm going to essentially sandwich 
this acetate card between those two pieces. So I'm adding this on the inside of the card right behind that watercolor piece there. And that serves to just cover up all the adhesive that would show through if I didn't have that piece. Now I went ahead and used the next size die up to create the piece for the inside. You could use the same size, but I thought this would create a nice mat for it. And it kind of gives the illusion that that front piece is kind of floating. So I've added adhesive to the back of that and I'm going to go ahead and position it right where I want it and just get it lined up. So I'm using that one that's already on the front to line it up. Once I get it into position, then I'm just going to close the note card. And that way, because the adhesive's already on the back of it, it's going to stick exactly in the place that I want it. And once again, because I want to cover up all that adhesive, I'm going to add adhesive to a second piece cut out of some Nina Solar White cardstock and add that to the back of the card. So once again, I've sandwiched that acetate between those two pieces. And that also adds a place where you can write, you know, a greeting or, or a note inside the card as well. So that, that's kind of cool for that as well. Now I've cut this fancy hello die out of navy cardstock as well as some metallic cardstock from Tim Holtz. And I'm just adding a little zig two-way glue pin to the navy piece. And I'm going to layer it right on top of that gold piece, but I'm kind of offsetting it just a bit. And this is a cool way to kind of create a shadow effect behind your die. And then I'm just going to set this aside to dry, and I'm just placing a stamp block over it to make sure that it sets up really nicely. Now I was looking at this and I really felt like this watercolor piece needed a little bit of texture to it. I, I'm just not sure if it was just feeling too soft for all of the colors and the patterns that were going on. So I went ahead and added this stamp. This is from Savvy Stamps. This is a little triangle stamp here. And I'm stamping it in some Hero Arts dye ink. Now this dye ink is not going to give you the same effect as a pigment ink. It is a much more muted effect. So if you want a bolder look, go ahead and use a pigment ink. Now you can see here, I've just added a little foam adhesive behind one of those stripes on the acetate because I wasn't sure if it would actually show through or not, so I was kind of experimenting there. And lucky for me, the foam tape, you could not see it at all behind those stripes. So I went ahead and cut some more down, positioned it all behind those stripes, and I kind of positioned it to the lower half where I knew that the sentiment would kind of draw the eye away from it anyway. And then I added some foam adhesive to the right side of my sentiment, and I added a little multi-matte medium to the left side of the sentiment, and I'm going to place that on to where it's overlapping that heart as well. So lucky for me, those stripes perfectly hid that foam adhesive, and so that's something else that you can think about is strategically placing your foam adhesive behind patterns or behind sequins like I'm adding here. I finished the card off and added a little bit of sparkle by adding some sparkling clear as well as some marigold sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. And then I rounded the two corners on the end with my We Are, we Are Memory Keepers 3 8 inch corner chomper. Now I was looking at this and the card was complete here, but I felt like it just needed that lime green brought in in one more area. So I went ahead and re-die cut that larger nesting frame shape out of some Juicy Pear cardstock, and I replaced that white piece with the Juicy Pear there instead. So that completes my card for today, a really fun acetate card saying hello to summer with some bright summery colors. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, you can get more information over in the Classroom blog, as well as see more still shots. I've also linked all the products which are available at ellenhudson.com over in the Classroom post as well. I will see you next month for another Saturday. Until then, I hope you have a fabulous day.